run this so as you can see the loss is decreasing and it's decreasing aggressively that is because of the learning rate if you reduce the learning rate hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture today we will be making a tensor class that will ultimately help us to create a neural network so let's start so if you remember in the last lecture we created a layer class and the layer class was nothing but a vector of neurons if you remember in our first lecture we created a class value the tensor class will be nothing but a vector of class values particularly it will be vector of class value pointers so let's start so i'll just define tensor class here and as we did in our earlier classes i will just create a data member private data member and that will be actually value pointer sorry uh, this will be uh, let's call them tensor with a small t and now let's make the constructor and the constructor will be also this follow the same format as we did uh, earlier one thing to note is i think since we will be supporting 2d vectors also or 2d tensors also i think it's better to create a vector of vector of value pointers so this will help us and let's create a first constructor public constructor and it will take initialize a list as an input and it will create a tensor out of it so i think for now that should be enough uh, as our constructor i don't think so we need more let's also uh, add some more functions to support range based for loops because we'll be iterating over the data a lot so if you remember range based for loops are something like const auto in in input and you do something like this so the input here is a, a container that supports range based for loops so to support that we need to create four methods and these are begin and begin with the const and end with the const and uh, they return an iterator so if we do that we will support range based for loops and it's just a cleaner syntax for any one of the users to do so once that is done i think we just need to uh, add some more methods that we did in our previous classes so so in our previous classes we created the zero grad method that I think will be useful for this tensor class also. And we also created this parameters. And I think we might also add a print method just to see what's going on. So after that, let's add a zero grad method that will essentially make the gradients of all the elements in this vector zero. So, so it grabs all the subtensor and from the subtensor grabs all the values so this subtensor is the 1d vector this tensor was a 2d vector and this 1d vector is made up of various values so we're just uh, assigning the gradient to be zero for that value uh, let's also create a reset method that will clear the tensor we could have also named it clear but it doesn't matter a lot at this point what we name it um, what else will we need from a tensor i think we might also need something to grab elements from so like we need an operator that might for example we can say tensor 2 might give us the whole second row and if we do something like this it will give us the element that is in the second row and third column something like that so let's overload one of the operators and we will just overload this operator and we will do some type checking here and uh, sorry bounds checking here and we will return the tensor uh, we will essentially return the sub tensor 
it will be a Wendy vector. And just let us follow the same syntax to return a particular element from a row. And for that, let's um, do at. We could have also done uh, something like this. So it's one of the same thing, to be honest. Actually, let's just do it like this, just to follow the convention that we have created here. So I will just say operator like this. OK, so I think we have overloaded most of the operators that we needed. One thing that I think could be also important is to push to that vector, push elements to that vector. So let's create a push back method for that. Take a value as an input, and what it will do is it will create a new subtensor and instantiate that subtensor with that value. So it created a new subtensor and uh, basically copied that value to that subtensor and uh, then pushed back that subtensor to the tensor. I think one last thing that we might need is to check the size of the vector. So also, let's add this. We have all the building blocks now. Now it's up to the implementer how they want to implement all the operations. One of the algorithms that is very easy to start with and helps you understand neural networks a little bit better is multi-layer perceptron, MLP. So we can start with MLP and uh, let's look at what MLP is, multi layer perceptron. So if you guys have got time, you can look into MLP. And uh, this is all the math that we implemented in our code. So this might scare you, but this is something that you guys have already coded in the if you're following this lecture. So yeah, let's start coding multi layer perceptron. Okay, so for MLP, now since we have coded most of the stuff, it will be pretty straightforward. Again, we will follow the same approach and we will start by creating a class called MLP and uh, we will create three data members, sizes, layers, and learning rate. So each neural network needs a learning rate. And this layers will be nothing but uh, the size of the layers that we want in a multiple layer perceptron. So let's say the input of your data is for uh, the dimension of it is, let's say, four. So you get four input neurons to a multi layer perceptron that will receive that input. And let's say that you want to output, uh, let's say you want to use four neurons in the next layer so the next layer will have four neurons and you can have as many layers with as many neurons you want so let's say you have 80 new uh, 80 neurons in the next layer then 80 neurons in the next layer then 100 neurons in the next layer and in the end you need to output a, a value so it's up to you if you want to output four values one value anything uh, let's say we are doing some kind of logistical regression in which we need a single value. So we need a yes or a no value. So in that case, we will just output one value, right? A binary outcome. But it could be also that we are using an algorithm that needs as many outputs as there were inputs. So if there are four inputs, we need four outputs. So this is the, so the layers essentially will contain this information. Okay, so let's start by creating the constructor of the MLP. So we will have a default learning rate and we will um, kind of assume that right now that there will be only four layers, um, but um, that's basically up to you what you want to implement. So what essentially this constructor does is it takes a size in and size in is a way for the user to tell this 
algorithm that this will be the size of my input so that will be the number of input neurons also so we will push back the number of input neurons to this sizes vector and uh, this n outs what i was telling was that earlier was that let's say this is the size in of the multilayer perceptron and uh, this might be the n outs so n outs basically means that these are the outputs of the successive layers so for example in the next layer you need four outputs number of neurons directly correspond to the number of outputs so if there are four neurons in the next layer that means that there will be four outputs from that layer so so n outs basically describe that okay and the learning rate is how fast or slow no, um, it's not really that but it directly corresponds to how fast or slow your uh, algorithm learns but it, it comes with very various caveats okay so that's that let's also create a destructor just to know that all our memory is safe and uh, just to track that down um, as other classes also we will do a zero grad to empty all the gradients of the layers so mlp essentially you can think of it as a container of layers layers was a container of neurons and a neuron was a container of values so as you can see we are following a particular pattern okay so other classes we also created a parameters function so like this we create a parameters function that gives us all the parameters in this uh, class so we can do the same in multilayer perceptron class also and uh, this will output all the parameters in this class and as you can see the parameters are nothing but the value pointer shared value pointer so um, that's that okay and uh, let's also create a function to print the parameters so we will print the parameters like this and uh, one thing and i think this was one of the one of the most important functions is to update the multilayer perceptron so once you do forward propagation on the way backwards when you do backward propagation you need to update all the parameters so in that case you will do something like this you will use the learning rate and you are using minus learning rate because you want to go on the opposite direction so so if you look at that uh let's see in multilayer perceptron this minus sign right gradient descent you take minus of the delta and minus of delta is uh, delta here is gradient and uh, so minus of gradient and the learning rate basically tells how aggressive you want to do it so once you do update uh, the last function is to add an operator that will do forward propagation in a recursive manner okay so this will do forward propagation in a recursive manner so for all the layers it will get the output of the layer and that output of the layer will become input in the next for loop iteration so that way you will always keep moving forward so once we do that i think we can create a multilayer perceptron very easily now let's look at the final part of this whole series this series has come a long long way and right now we will be looking at the final product of our code the final implementation so let's look at it so first of all i have defined two tensors one is input and one is output and it is a long 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 tensor and the input and output contain the same value and what we will be training a neural network will be to predict the input values so assuming we send the input values to the neural network and in the output we will expect a neural network to learn the input values now it is just a uh, 
1D tensor in a sense that you can just think of it as just one batch of the input data. So we just have one batch and this, that will be this huge tensor that we have. I've initialized the learning rate to be 0 0.25, which is kind of aggressive. And the reason I did was because of this video, the higher the learning rate, the faster the network learns. But uh, there are some problems with that also. But I think for this problem, 0 0.25 should work. And then I initialized the MLP that we just coded. And the input or the network size of the MLP is equal to the size of the our input tensor. So the size of our batch, essentially, uh, or the size of the first element of the batch. That's the correct way to think of it. And then we just start the training loop. One thing of importance is that we zero out all the gradients uh, in our batch. So if you have worked with PyTorch, you would have uh, come across zero grade of input PyTorch. And in PyTorch, we basically zero out the gradients using optimizer.zero-grad. Since we don't have an optimizer explicitly, we are just using uh, the classes that we defined. So with this, this is very important. We have to zero out the gradient before the start of every loop. And then we initialize the loss value, which is zero. And then we do a forward propagation. And forward propagation, we basically push out the R input and all the way till the end of our neural network and we get the output. So this Ypred tensor, it contains the output. And once we get the output, we basically have a loss function here. And this loss function is nothing but this square of the difference. So this loss is expected output minus Y prediction. And we just square this. So this is the loss. And we have already defined these functions in our value class. So we construct the loss. And then once this forward propagation is done, then we start doing the backward propagation. And for backward propagation, actually, let me zoom on in a little bit. So with backward propagation, first of all, we zero out the gradients of our MLP, and then we do loss backprop. So loss is a value class and backprop is a function that we define of a backprop class. So if you go all the way up in this class, we defined a function called backprop, which is responsible for uh, backward propagation. So once that is done, once the back propagation is done, we have fresh gradients that we just calculated using back propagation, and then we update the values of MLP using those fresh gradients. So MLP's update method it uses those updated gradients to change the value of the data of all values. So once that is done, we just output and repeat. So let's see what we get here. So okay, and just run this. So as you can see, the loss is decreasing and it's decreasing aggressively. That is because of the learning rate. If you reduce the learning rate, the loss will decrease, but it will the rate of decrement will be a little bit lower and it will take more time to converge. I was really, really happy that I was able to teach you guys how to create a neural network in C++. And if you guys gained any value from this series, please like and subscribe, share these series share these videos and that will mean the world to me you guys were also very appreciative and very encouraging in the comments so i really, really thank you that was really important to me and it helped me a lot to make all this content so please support this channel and please let me know in the comments what type of videos you really want to see and any topics that you want me to cover so thank you all and please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next series. Bye-bye.